that time of the week again when we discuss all the ways in which the media covers themselves in glory, Sagar. Mm -hmm, that's right. So we're going to be joined by our great friend Katie Halper to break down how the media has covered itself in glory. Good to see you, Katie. Hi, you guys too. Absolutely. So, of course, we have to focus on uh, traditional great friends of our show, MSNBC, <laughs> Rachel Maddow, the and Always Nicole the Wallace, and their, their just absolutely ridiculous reactions to the DNC and its coverage. Let's just take a listen and we want to get your reaction. President Obama's speech tonight slayed me. Um, I'm sure people have different opinions about it because it's a different kind of thing from him, but his warnings that we could potentially be at the end of American democracy um, scared me and I found upsetting and hard to watch. Um, but it's powerful, powerful stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, you know, I, 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 first of all, I'd just like to co-sign everything that, uh, that Rachel Maddow just said, because I, I agree. Well, what did you make of that, Katie? We got that. Joy Reid. We had Nicole Wallace repeatedly saying, oh, my God, he acted like a president. It was she so was amazing. Like, literally almost in tears. Yeah. Almost Nicole in tears. Wallace. I know. I mean, first of all, slayed me. You couldn't yeah. take that out of, like, the blue check uh, handbook anymore. Does that mean <laughs> they should call him, like, Slay King, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then I love the way Maddow pretends like she just heard that idea that this could be the end of democracy as we know mm -hmm. it. And she's like, what he said, that just really scared me. It's like, you say this on every episode yeah, of, your like every of your show. And <laughs> now you're pretending. Yeah. And now you're pretending you had this real aha moment, this real, uh, realization of what's at stake when literally that's the premise of every episode of your show. I mean, right. I always joke on this show, right? We were talking about the, the walls closing in, like the slowest moving walls ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and uh, I mean, it's great. It's like I just co-sign what Rachel Maddow says, which basically is, is exactly what every MSNBC host does to each other, right? It's just one voice. Yes. After the Michelle Obama speech on the first night, they said that um, it was the most epic speech of a generation was what the analysis yes. was. I think that was over on CNN. Cool. Nicole yeah. Wallace jumped in with, oh, th she threw epic shade at yes, President Trump. That was, at President. that was her line. So she had a lot of good work that she was doing this week. I just, you know, Katie, like parts of the DNC were fine. I actually thought, yeah. and I'd like to know your thoughts on what landed with you and what didn't. I thought Jill, Dr. Jill Biden's speech actually like sounded a resonant note in the school with that like tangible right. sense of loss of normalcy. I thought the elevator operator who nominated Joe was phenomenal. To me, that was actually maybe the moment of the entire event. Yeah. I thought Joe vastly exceeded expectations. I mean, there's a real question whether he could get up there and for 30 minutes sort of hold right. forth in a way that was coherent. He more than did that. Um, but they just go so over the top. Every speech is the yeah. most incredible thing, and they're slayed, and they've never heard anything better. It's yeah. like, do people buy this stuff? I mean, I thought that when, you know, speaking of Joanne Reed's responses, I thought that it was such an interesting tell when she said, like, how relatable Jill uh, Biden was, which is a fine thing to say, but the reason she was relatable to her is because she's the dog, that, because uh, Joanne Reed herself, her mom is a professor, and it's just such a great example that. of yeah. how, like, okay, so your mom is a professor and that's what makes her resonate with you. Like, what about the rest of the world that doesn't have professor moms? I mean, I say this, Kate, I, Katie Helper, my mom isn't a professor. Not that she's very, I mean, Jill, Jill Biden doesn't remind me of my own mom, but it's just such a great example of how out of touch and kind of egocentric and self-referential people are in the media and how they don't ever see the world the way that other people see it. It's all about what resonates with them on a personal level. Yeah, um, I think that's right. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, one of the things that Crystal and I really uh, observed, and Matt Stoll actually even crystallized this, he was like, it just seems like the DNC wants to be MSNBC. They want to make MSNBC right. president. That, that's kind of yeah. what came through. And it's just, there seems to be such a feedback loop between the two yeah, groups. Total I mean, feedback loop. Yeah. and to give you a perfect example, the guy who, John Meacham, a historian who is always right. on mm -hmm. Morning Joe, wrote Joe Biden's speech. He was the so whole soul perfect. of America. That's the title and, of his book. And got more well, speaking time, I think, a... than Bernie Sanders. Yeah, tonight, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but who else could they invite to channel Dr. Martin Luther King, to be fair? Yeah, he right. was just right. perfect. Yeah. You know, he spoke right, right through him, right? I mean, I, I couldn't get over how, I just was waiting for Henry Kissinger or maybe John Birch to be brought back from the dead to be able to address the DNC. And you know, what I was just thinking is that 
I think Steve Bannon should be welcomed into the resistance. And what he should do, he, if he's smart, he's going to pretend that he's stealing money from the Build the, uh, Wall project for like his own personal gain. He should pretend that that is a part of the resistance. Right. And he was trying to challenge um, Trump's wall. Mm-hmm. And then I bet he'd have a speaking spot uh, at the oh, DNC. Totally. Oh, it's and a, an MSNBC right. slot, too. That's oh, a part regular of one. Plan. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant right? idea. There was this little moment that I caught. Um, They had former uh, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy on last night. And his Chiron, where they say who he is, Mm -hmm. it said he was educated at Yale. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) It was just a little thing. But I was like, why would you do that? Why? But I think think it speaks to this, like, his voice is amazing. I think it speaks to, though, this real realignment, and it, it is the MSNBC mm-hmm. realignment of the party. They've chosen this affluent, upper-middle-class suburbanite as, like, their dream voter. And so right. when you put up there, like, the official Educated. credential, you know, the Ivy League credential that they all aspire to for their kids or whatever, then that's very validating for them. I just thought it was such an interesting little tell. Yeah, really. I mean, it, it also— that it was a great tell. Also, um, uh, Elizabeth Warren's BLM blocks was another great tell. Like you, you couldn't symbolize better how the entire DNC is about credentials, like Yale, um, and about what's so fascinating is that they make these very good systemic critiques of structural racism, systematic racism, systemic racism, how COVID disproportionately affects people of color, and then their solutions are building our, our children's blocks that spell out BLM, and also rejecting Medicare for all. Now, if you actually see COVID as something that perpetuates racism and disproportionately affects people of color, and you stand in the way of something that would actually protect people and disproportionately protect people of color, what are you saying? It's almost, I mean, I find that more disturbing than people who have no idea about the racial implications of COVID. I mean, that is really, to me, actually evil. I really think it is because you understand how this system works. You claim to um, uh, stand in solidarity and to advocate for the people who are affected by it. And your claim is that you are challenging the systemic racism. But what are you doing? You're literally calling it out and standing in the way of actual legislation that could ameliorate this. And your solution is, again, building blocks, building back better. I just realized I gave them some more alliteration. That means nothing that they can incorporate into their motto. Um, And it's just, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's literally, it's systemic problems and symbolic solutions. Um, Nothing set me off more. Nothing set me off more than those damn blocks. And it wasn't just the blocks. It was the fact that, like, the pod saved dues and all these people are like, oh, my God, Slay Queen. This is amazing. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I think that it, it is kind of, you know, the praise of Biden reminds me of when uh, during one of the debates, uh, Andrew Quo- uh, Chris Cuomo said that it was the best debate he had seen um, Biden in so far. He was alert the entire time. Wow. <laughs> and that's yeah. basically what the right. verdict on this speech was. No yeah. gaffes, no, um, you know, inability to, to read anything. Um, look, it was a teleprompter. It was prepared. I think they probably let him sleep for a couple of months in the basement and then shot him up with Adderall or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was able to pull it off, you know. That's it's what a I low do before the show. In fairness, that's what I do before the show every that's day. Right. Yeah, exactly. Me too. How do you think I do? <laughs> yeah. All right. Katie, great to see Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Have a great yeah. weekend. Yeah. All right. We'll have more content for you later.